Welcome! In this video I will help you show that any matrix A, which is 4x4, can be written in the terms of the gamma matrices that we have seen before, the Dirac gamma matrices, the 16 gamma matrix, the identity gamma mu, gamma 5, gamma mu, gamma 5, sigma mu nu, right? And this basically means that we can write any matrix 4x4 in terms of these 16 gamma matrices. Now that means, as we have written there, that that matrix can be written as a linear combination of those 16 gamma matrices. And basically, we want to also find what this constant is. Okay, so the way to go about it is say, okay, let's say we have A, which is any 4x4 matrix, and we want to actually show that we can write it as sum over A of some constant times this gamma A, so the, the gamma matrices. So we want to make sure that this exists, right? We can actually find some CA. That is that is the whole point of this. Okay, so well, well, how can we find this? Now, what we will do is we will multiply by gamma B. So we are going to multiply by gamma B here. Gamma B written like this is the inverse of gamma B. So this is gamma B up here to the minus one, right? In the term, in the sense of inverse. So we will now have this gamma b to the minus 1. Let's multiply it uh, from the right. So perhaps a uh, gamma b. Okay. And here we will now separate this, uh, the sum over this matrix. Why? Because each element will behave, behave different than one particular element. What do I mean by that? When we multiply when a is equal to b, that term is going to cancel out with its inverse and give us the identity matrix and the other ones will not. So that's why we will write this as CB times gamma B and now times gamma B. And then plus the sum over A, but A cannot take the value B anymore because we have already written it to the left. And then we have CA gamma A gamma B. Okay, so that's what we have right now. Now, notice that this part right here is simply the identity matrix. So this is the identity. And gamma A times gamma B, that's the product of two gamma matrices. And as we showed in the previous problem that is in the playlist, uh, we can write the, the result of the product of two gamma matrices is another gamma matrix up to a factor of plus or minus one. So that means gamma A, gamma B. This is simply going to give us some other gamma times a prefactor eta, which can be plus or minus one, plus or minus i, right? So eta is either plus or minus one or plus or minus i, depending on which exact matrices we're multiplying. And then we get some gamma, let's call it d, and then just sum over d instead of a. And there we go. And now we take the trace of this, right? The trace, as I've explained, is a very, very useful thing because it allows many things to be simplified as you're about to see. The trace of the left side, well, it's the matrix times gamma B. And then we have CB. So we have the trace of CB times the identity matrix times the trace of the sum of D, which is different from B, CD, eta, gamma, D. Okay. So now let's see. Now we have here... Well, of course, the left-hand side will not change. So A, gamma, B. This is going to be equal to... And now C, B, we can take it outside because it's simply a number. It's some pre-factor, some constant. So it, we can take it out of the trace. And we have the trace of the identity matrix, which is 4. It's a 4x4 four four identity matrix, so the trace is 4. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. And then we have the trace of this. But we can interchange the order, of course, as we have seen because of the property that the trace of A plus B plus C is the trace of A plus the trace of B plus the trace of C. So this would give us CD, which we can take out of a trace. It's, a, it's just a scalar. And the trace of eta, which we can actually also take outside because it's plus or minus one, plus or minus I. And the, uh, the trace of gamma D. So, whew. <laughs> okay. So here, um, what we have is simply that, look at this, this thing right here, the trace of one of our gamma functions here, of one of the gamma, that's going to be zero. And keep in mind, of course, that that happens because the trace 
of one of our gamma functions. This is going to be zero if uh, if gamma d is not the uh, the identity matrix, and it's going to be four if it is the identity matrix. However, this gamma d cannot be the identity matrix because it comes as the product of two gamma matrices, and there are no two gamma matrices that give you the the identity matrix unless it's the identity times itself. But that's not really what we had because our initial two gammas, right, the ones that gave us gamma d, were different, right? Ah, I erased them, but we had gamma a, gamma b, which were different. And yeah, if you have if gamma a or gamma b were the identity matrix, and you multiply it by something that is not the identity matrix, you get not the identity matrix. There's no way that gamma d here can be the identity matrix. So for that reason. This trace is zero, so this entire thing is zero. So from here we can now see that the constant CB is going to be 1 over 4 times the trace of A times gamma B. So there you go. If you have some matrix A and you want to write it in terms of gamma matrices, then you write A is equal to and then you have the sum. So let me just write it like this. So let's sum over B, uh, B, C, B, gamma B. What is C, B? Well, for example, in the first case, you would have to put in here. So that would be 1 over 4 times the trace of whatever A is times the identity matrix. And then you have to multiply this by the identity matrix. So times the identity matrix plus 1 over 4, the trace of A times, and now you have to multiply each of the gamma moves. So I don't know, let's say gamma 0 first, times in gamma 0, and then, you know, so on and so forth. You do it for every single one, and you will get your A back. Um, so yeah, there we go. So of course, plus, etc. So there you go. This is how you can prove that you can write any matrix in terms of uh, of these gamma matrices, which will come into play later on. So I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please consider leaving a like on the video, commenting and subscribing, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching.